If you're like me, you're tired of hearing the same old stories rehashed through TV and movies. What's better than recycled fiction? Stories about real people. People are interesting, and interesting people have interesting stories. Sometimes there's more to a story, even one you think you know. Everyone has a story. This is episode number 26, The Yellow Brick Road to Beverly Hills. Born in Belleville, Illinois, Frank and his family moved to Orlando, Florida when he was about age 10. His father was a choreographer and opened a dance studio. So throughout his childhood, Frank had the benefit of ballet lessons along with his four sisters. He actually aspired to become a medical doctor, but life took Frank on a different course. He started medical school, then found it necessary to drop out because of financial constraints. So Frank decided to follow in his father's footsteps to make a career as a dancer and performer. With $26.75 in his pocket, Frank left sweltering Florida for the big-time opportunities in New York City. In New York, he worked at a soda fountain to sustain himself until he could get some traction in show business. The dancing training he received as a child in his father's studio paid off and landed him a role in a successful Broadway musical. This newfound success inspired Frank to invite his sister to New York, too. Together, they performed a charming song and dance routine that had them touring the vaudeville circuit. Their shows garnered a lot of publicity for them, and they were soon approached by MGM for a screen test. They signed a two-year contract with MGM and began appearing in films together. Unfortunately for his sister, MGM eventually terminated her contract, but Frank's talent got him roles in numerous films, both musical and non-musical. His almost big break came when he was cast as the Scarecrow in the classic film The Wizard of Oz. But in a late casting switch, the part of the Scarecrow was given to fellow actor Ray Bolger. Subsequently, Frank was recast as the Tin Man. He attended four weeks of rehearsals and thought he was all set for the role. However, ten days into shooting, Frank was hospitalized in critical condition. In a sad twist of fate, the silver makeup used in costuming for his role as the Tin Man had caused a severe reaction. Shortness of breath indicated his lungs were failing, and he suffered from muscle spasms and painful cramping. Doctors determined this was caused by the aluminum content in the Tin Man's makeup. Only when studio executives observed him in the hospital did they appreciate the severity of his reaction and that he'd be unable to play the role. Frank remained in the hospital for two critical weeks during filming and spent another month recovering. Consequently, he was forced to relinquish the part to Jack Haley, and Frank was removed from the production entirely. There were conflicting stories as to whether he stepped down voluntarily or was fired. No footage of Frank as the Tin Man has ever been released, though there are audio recordings of him singing and rare photographs that show him in costume on the set. When he recovered, MGM offered Frank a long-term contract but he objected to terms that gave the studio absolute control over his career. The contract dispute with MGM led to Frank being ostracized in Hollywood. For a while, it looked like his days in film were over, but the debacle with MGM was far from the end of Frank's career in acting. During World War II, he served as a Coast Guard lieutenant aboard the USS Pocatello, a submarine chaser in the North Pacific. Nearly 20 years passed before Frank made a substantial comeback to Hollywood when Walt Disney hired him to play Fess Parker's sidekick in Davy Crockett. In 1962, he went on to make Hollywood history as the common-sense patriarch of an unsophisticated family who comes into a fortune after the discovery of crude oil on their land. That's right, Frank Buddy Ebsen, who was unable to play the part of the Tin Man and nearly lost his career over it, was most remembered for his role as the good-natured Jed Clampett of the Beverly Hillbillies. That's his story. Stories of real people can be a ton of fun, totally entertaining. Share these stories with your friends and family. Most of all, your kids. Gives you something to talk about. If you enjoy these stories, add it to your favorites so you'll get the newest episodes right when they're released. I'm Rodney Powell, and you're listening to the Everyone Has a Story podcast, a production of realmedia.us. We'll meet back here next time. Everyone has a story. Mm-hmm.